here we've collected well over 5,000 gallons of water and that's good. I am hoping to conservatively use it over until it's like about July or August. Hopefully I can last that long. We're due for some rain on Saturday and Sunday but it's about 0 0.02 or 0 0.04 inches so it's not going to be a lot most of what we got was um, already this past weekend and the prior rain um, but I'm happy that it rained well into February and March another thing we do to conserve water is during the winter months uh, because the weather doesn't get too hot, it's actually pretty cold. We don't water our front lawn whatsoever. We have grass. Um, we're slowly converting it to, you know, flowers and other other things. But uh, we don't water it in the winter as it doesn't really burn. And it's not lush, complete, 100% green grass. There's some weeds in there. and. So we just mow it up <clears throat> every once in a while, about once a month. So we don't use that much gasoline as well when we run our lawnmower. And we take the cuttings and feed it to our chickens or just throw it in the coop so they can just play in there and have cool, a cool something to walk on. And they do peck at it. They like to eat grass. And they will be a whole lot happier. So as we build the soil here and try to provide lots of things to compost down such as leaves, compost, coffee grounds, grass, um, chicken, fertilizer, all that stuff is going to um, break down and make us good soil. So we're building the soil while we're planting things. So here I have a lot of aloe. I'm going to have to move it. But they're offering protection and shade to the chickens on this side so that uh, things don't burrow underneath their pen and um, won't predate on them. And actually the these are two different kinds of aloes and that's the climbing aloe and this is a normal aloe and look at how beautiful and lush it is and it's making um baby leaves right there if you can see the little leaf coming out a whole new plant comes from that and um you can use this for sunburns you can use it to make a drink out of you can use it you can use it as a decorative plant in your garden I can't get rid of any excess plants that I have other than to rehome them to other people so that's what I tend to do but these are great plants like you can get so much bulk from this climbing aloe and it makes many new baby plants and you can just cut them off and make a new plant for somebody and re-gift it or uh, grow it someplace else or cut it down and use it as a conditioner for your hair. So here in SoCal we have tons of rain. We are having our 12th atmospheric river and uh, all our cisterns, all our troughs, all our every container that I can get a hold of to catch water are full and I've even um, transferred a lot of water into the food forest. I've moved tons of water into the food forest and just made um i'm just trying to keep everything kind of in the ground um let it soak it all up so that i don't have to water it too much in the early spring and early summer season 
and then I'll use up the some of the water over the summer the ones that I've captured but I'm sinking it slowly into the ground and hoping that I won't have to water it too much and after all these so 12 atmospheric rivers that's unprecedented they said we haven't had this much rain um, since 30 years ago so once every 30 year rain or more um, I think this exceeded that last rain 30 years ago so everything's just blooming I can't even get to my vegetables because it's raining all the time off and on um, I just plucked a little bit of it um, to kind of get rid of it from going to seed so I plucked a few to put into my dish today and I'm gonna keep harvesting this so that I can have it a little longer while my new seedlings are um, starting to grow and I see that I have calendula coming up and my peas we just harvested over 50 uh, snap peas and sweet peas and so you don't see the peas on here because that's what we did just yesterday here's another section with the peas I grew this in early January or late December because I know peas like the cold they do not like sun whatsoever they start to die immediately when the hot summer sun comes out here in Southern California and I'm just waiting for some flowers to bloom here I'm not sure what's going on I think those are bachelor's button right there and then I have some California poppies right there along with some bulbs hyacinth bulbs so in the middle of winter I had a sunflower grow so I know it's capable of growing in California probably all year long so I went ahead and threw some more seeds into the ground so this one's on its way up and I have a few more growing in various places with all this rain uh, my borage has been coming up the, so the soil is nice and soft because it would normally be pretty hard here it's very clay still here but the borage is coming up really quick when it was just a little seedling about this size it takes like several weeks but once it gets a little bit bigger it just shoots up really fast and amongst the borage I have some black oil sunflower seeds that I sowed and they're growing and I'm gonna give the seeds to the chickens to eat it came directly from their feed when you're too busy collecting water and trying to conserve as much as you can and recycle and reduce reuse and stuff like that and compost you don't get to enjoy the things growing in your garden so before I knew it this nasturtium that self seeded itself grew to be quite large and then here in this bed it's really really big and then the fennel's growing coming along so the nasturtium's taking over this bed which is quite wonderful I didn't have to plant it because I was um, having a hard time looking for the seeds I have no idea where I placed them um, I, I think somewhere in the shed but that's great I love it hi friends so today we're going to plant these daylily little missy I got two plants for $7.98 and they look so pretty I love the color and I got them from Lowe's so I opened up the bag I already prepped the soil here in this pot that I bought from Costco it's a set of three for about $25 and I have this first bulb it kind of looks like, oh look, it came in one, two, three bulbs. Is there more? Let me take a look. 
Let me empty out this bag that the bolts came in. It looked like it started to um, grow the leafy parts again and then it died. So it had stored energy in it during the winter. And and then it started to grow and then it um, faded again. So we'll put it root side, root side down and so those are the roots and bulbs and then this is the shoots. So we'll plant it root side down. And since I have three, I'll try to do three plants. Give them each a good chance to grow. And then the great thing about these are they can be separated. So you can have more plants later on. But I love the color, so I chose this one. So we'll um, check it out in a few weeks. So we... I planted it about one and a half inches deep. It says plant it one to two inches deep and 18 to 24 inches apart. I have it in the same um, container and eventually if it does get cluttered or too, t um, too congested, I will separate them. And they grow to be 16 to 24 inches tall and the instructions to plant them are so easy as you can see here I have some branches from my apple tree and what happened was I was thinning out the apple tree uh, it has way too many branches and I was getting rid of anything and opening it up so it would have air and it decreases the chance of disease on the tree and I took them and I threw them over here on the side of my fencing where I have green beans growing because I didn't want a possum or a raccoon to dig up um, this area where I just seeded the green beans now it's been a while I haven't seen any green beans coming up but it might take a while because it's not been very sunny and warm and it's been very very rainy unseasonably so so um, of course what happened was these branches have thorns and they're quite thick so this is how thick the thorn is and I stepped onto one of them and it went right through my flip-flop into my heel and I had to pull it out and <laughs> it was excruciating so as you can see, here's another thorn, thorns everywhere. And so because apples are in the rose family or vice versa, they're in the same family. And so I couldn't have it, you know, all over my path and being stepped on again. So I picked it up and over here surrounding my, what will be my flower bed, I had two trellises right here to keep the same animals from digging in my seeded areas. So what I did was I removed the trellis and placed them elsewhere and I'm gonna grow melons up the trellises. So in the meantime, I decided to use these sticks as like a barrier, which was what I was using the trellises for, which actually this is better for that purpose. So things will kind of brush up against this and they won't go past it. Hi friends. So I checked up on my seedlings, the pepper seedlings that I sowed about three weeks ago or a month ago and there was nothing because I would cover it and sporadically when I'd uncover it I would forget to cover it at nights and it's been very rainy and very cold and very unusual wet weather for California 
So, um, and just two days ago, I didn't see anything. And now I've got, I've got some chili peppers popping up and you can tell because they have those pointy leaves. So there is another one. And so that makes about four or five of them. And then over here I've got some radishes and over here I had some spare seeds of all kinds from celery to brassicas and I just they fell out of their pouch and they were at the bottom of my seed container so I just threw them here and whatever grows grows no big deal and so I'm going to cover this up now because we're due for rain tonight and tomorrow and it's going to be a lot colder than usual. So I am checking in on my seedlings, my tomato seedlings that I placed them in a styrofoam box and I put a sterilite box over top to make a um, kind of like a greenhouse and it they're now growing and I love that because I started them about a month ago as well um, I think these I started two weeks before the chili peppers so as you can see you can see a lot more seedlings popping up than the chili peppers and of course it's really cold so the chili peppers require a lot of heat in order to germinate and over here I'm not seeing any growth in this Kellogg and this dark seaman tomato so these might just take longer I'm hoping that that's all it is and these are doing fantastic um, Oh, I'm sorry. This isn't a, a Kellogg. It's a yellow stuffer tomato. So the Kellogg's breakfast, the chocolate striped tomatoes, and vintage wine are doing great. So I'm going to have to separate these pretty soon when they get a little taller before they, the roots get tangled up together. And once I separate them out and they grow a little bit long, um, bigger, I can give them to friends and family and then put them into the garden. 